so hi everyone today we will be discussing about one of the most important and exciting algorithms that is used for recommendation systems that is factorization machine so don't get confused it with matrix factorization these are completely different from matrix factorization so basically we will first try to understand why factorization machine are important so basically they are pretty good with sparse and high dimensional data as compared to other algorithms so if you remember in case of a collaborative filtering basically in ncf so we have millions of users and millions of items and eventually when you're trying to plot the user item interaction matrix it is usually sparse also and of very high dimension so in such cases factorization machine can be of a great help apart from that a big advantage that we get from factorization machine is that you can use meta information from user as well as from item also you can have extra columns coming in and it just doesn't work on user item interaction but can have extra information coming from user and item also so this is a very important feature that it brings in which is missing in collaborative filtering and ncf that we discussed last time so basically factorization machine uh, is a supervised machine learning algorithm which can be used for classification and regression purposes also but it became famous because of recommendation systems and going into the mathematics it can be taken as an uh, taken as an extension for linear regression so in case of linear regression we are capturing just the linear relationship between the variables but in case of factorization machine we will be capturing higher order relationship between the variables as well apart from linear relationship at times linear regression is also called as a specialized case of factorization machine so these two are that related so first of all we will try to understand what are higher order feature interactions so uh, at times in a particular data set we can um, two features combined have an effect on the target variable where this impact is also not linear and can't be represented by multi by some uh, linear transformation so like for example assume that we have this particular data set where we are doing a binary classification whether the user has clicked on an ad or not we have this particular data set user id user age ad type ad id and clicked or not right now it might be observed that the effect of ad type feature on the likelihood of click, clicking uh, on the likelihood of a user to click on an ad depends on user age so basically ad type and user age combined have an effect on the final label that is clicked or not for example younger users may be more likely to click on image ads as older users might uh, might prefer video ads now to capture this higher order interaction the model needs to account for how ad type and user age interact to influence the click through rate so here you can see that uh, the impact of ad type is not uniform across all the age groups so there is a higher order interaction that exists in this particular data set that can be captured using factorization machine so uh, let's understand how a factorization machine uh, can be implemented so here assume that we have this particular data set user id movie id age gender genre rating so here you can see that uh, apart from the user interaction user item interaction that is user id and movie id we have some features coming from user as well and from movie as well and rating is our label that we want to uh, train the model for so first of all we would be converting all the categorical variables that is user id movie id gender genre into one hot encodes we would we won't be converting the rating column as well as the age column because age column is a whole number similarly rating is also a whole number so once we have converted the categorical columns into one hot encodes we will be following this particular equation y equals to w0 plus summation wi into xi plus summation i summation j vi dot vj into xi into xj so basically y is the label w0 is the bias wi is weights xi is the features from one hot encoded feature set so these are not the features that we had in training data set but xi are the features after we one hot encoded everything so we have got extra columns now just do remember that and vi dot vj is the dot product between latent vectors I will be explaining everything. What are latent vectors? What is VIVJ? So basically, if you have uh, observed this particular equation, if you remove the third term, the first two terms represent the linear regression equation, right? Where W0 is the bias and WI into XI captures the weightage of each one hot encoded feature. Now, third column, third term that is getting added helps us in capturing the higher order interaction that we have discussed earlier. That is summation I, summation J, VI dot VJ, XI into XJ, right? where we would be multiplying each of the one hot encoded column uh, with one another alongside we would be also producing a dot product between the latent representation of these columns so at uh, so there would be four terms that are getting involved in this particular uh, uh, in this particular term that is the latent representation of uh, feature i latent representation of feature j 
feature j and feature i right so this might be a bit complicated to understand orally so we'll go through an example assume that we have two features that is age and genre and, and genre is a categorical column which has two possible values that is action and comedy so basically when you're one hot encoding this genre will get expanded into two columns one is genre action another is genre comedy right zero one one zero something like this happens in one hot encoding right so basically the third term if we have only two columns age and genre which get expanded to age genre action and genre comedy after one hot encoding the third term would look something like this a latent vector for age into latent vector for age into age into age this would be the cases where i equals to j right so we will be having both i and j equals uh, as the same columns age into age genre action into genre action genre comedy into genre comedy now the remaining three terms would be age into genre action age into genre comedy and genre comedy into genre action and apart from that their latent representation will also get multiplied so in each term we will be having four values that are getting multiplied so three columns uh, basically will mean that we will be having six terms coming in three permutation right because we are calculating the interaction between each of the possible pair right if it would have been four columns it would have been four permutation the total number of terms that we are generating because we are we would be incorporating all the possible pairs that we can form using all the features present now v0 w0 w and vi are the entities the model will learn during the training process so in this particular equation w0 is the bias wi is the weights and vi vj are the latent representation that the model will learn during training process and xi are the one hot encoded features and eventually we'll get a y for us now one last doubt before ending up is that ki what is the significance of using latent vectors why we are not using some weight matrix as we are using the second term what is the difference between a weight matrix and a latent vector that is getting used so basically latent vectors are also sort of a weight matrix only but they are smaller in size so this is done because in the third term if we have large number of columns coming in we will be calculating the interaction between each the each of the possible pairs which is leading to some permutation so if you have 10 columns we will be having 10 permutations now this becomes a uh, very very difficult to capture so in that case what we will do uh, if we are using some weight matrix that would become computationally very very expensive and also memory wise also it will become very very expensive so in that case we are using latent vectors so latent vectors nothing but a uh, an embedding of a definite size for each of the column so in that case we are saving on both computation as well as on memory that is a latent vectors are used else if you have smaller number of columns after one hot encoding you can go for uh, weights also thanks